So next up is the Cuban Missile Crisis, and again, of 1962, and again, we're going to look at the story, the consequences, and the importance of it. So in terms of the story, we know that on the 14th of October 1962, the Americans, through their U-2 spy planes, took pictures of what appeared to be uh, nuclear bases in Cuba, so nuclear weapons in, in Cuba, missile sites. Kennedy was faced with a problem of how to react to the missiles in Cuba without causing a full-blown war. We know that both sides at this point are, uh, have got lots of stockpiles of nuclear weapons and a full-blown war could be the end of civilization as we know it. So he assembles a committee together and they decide eventually that what they're going to do is not to attack Cuba, which was the kind of initial reaction, but to set up a naval blockade around the country of Cuba. So no more ships could pass through with weapons. Now, many people expected the Soviet Union to ignore the blockade, which would lead to an American attack and start a full-blown war. However, on the 24th of October, when Soviet ships reached the blockade, they turned around and this avoided triggering a nuclear war. So, whilst the confrontation had been narrowly avoided, the problem of Soviet weapons in Cuba still persisted, so those weapons are still there. So on the 26th of October, Khrushchev sends a telegram. Remember, that's kind of this old kind of email type thing. I know a few of you were a bit confused about what a telegram actually was. And he sends it to Kennedy, promising to remove the missiles if the US agreed not to invade Cuba. The next day, confusingly, though, he sends another telegram promising to remove the missiles if NATO missiles were removed from Turkey. Now, what Kennedy does is he decides to ignore the second telegram and go with the first one, that he will accept the conditions he won't invade Cuba as long as the USSR remove those weapons. And in secret, Kennedy's brother, Robert, Robert Kennedy, he meets with the Soviet ambassador in Washington and agrees for, to remove NATO missiles from Turkey. Remember, that's very close to the USSR. Six months later, and the public wouldn't be aware of it, so they'd remove them in secret. So closest the world's ever come to nuclear war, and it shows that through diplomatic processes, they've managed to avert that war. Now, in terms of the consequences, one of the immediate consequences of the Cuban Missile Crisis is that in June 1963, a direct communication line was set up, this hotline was set up between Moscow and the Kremlin and Washington. And this helped improve communication between the two leaders. It was hoped it would improve the strained relationship. We know there'd been some um, worries about communication, particularly with telegrams. Now we've got the two leaders being able to, to speak to each other directly, and that's going to help in terms of lots of things, actually. And the second consequence is that in 1963, they have this uh, test ban treaty and it's signed by both countries, also Britain, and it prohibits the testing of nuclear weapons in outer space, underwater or in the atmosphere. And this again is an attempt to avoid the tensions between the two sides. The world had come so close to nuclear war and both sides wanted to avoid escalating the problem. Now, the Cuban Missile Crisis is very important in terms of the development of the Cold War. So one of those big developments is the improvement in communication between these two leaders. So Cuban Missile Crisis had highlighted how important it was that they communicate with each other to, to de-escalate problems. Um, so the in introduction of the hotline after the crisis paved the way for clear and direct communication. Now, by 1964, there are new leaders in place. So Johnson's in place and, we, um, and Khrushchev has lost, lost power, um, but they still continue that communication and it actually acts as a catalyst for potentially face-to-face -face meetings. So actually by the early 1970s, the new president Nixon at that time meets Brezhnev in 1972. And that's quite a historic thing in terms of reducing the tensions. Another importance was it could be argued that the Cuban Missile Crisis were catalysts for detente in the 1970s. Both countries had realised how close they'd come to nuclear war, both countries could now destroy each other, and both countries are spending huge, vast sums of money on these nuclear weapons. Therefore, the crisis is crucial in, in signing of the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. There are further treaties to come, and the agreements paved the way for further agreements. So, in the 1970s, we know that we had the Strategic Arms Limitation Talks in 1972, which was a, a, a direct kind of lineage from that Cuban Missile Crisis. So the Cuban Missile Crisis is very important for the development of the Cold War. 